In a secret location in Kabul, Obaidullah Zazai teaches young male models how to walk the catwalk, groom themselves, and shop for the most flattering clothes. It's a site rarely associated with Afghanistan. Under the Taliban, even trimming your beard could lead to a severe beating or imprisonment. Since then, Zazai has made a name for himself as a designer and model, threading catwalks here and in Islamabad. But while the Taliban may have been ousted a decade ago, conservative views here live on. In his village, Zazai is a marked man. He can no longer return to his home province after receiving threats when he appeared modeling on television. There are people here living in the dark ages who say this is against Islam. It's not against Islam. This is something beautiful. There's nothing here to oppose. In recent years, men's fashion has had a revival in Kabul, with trendy clothing stores and hair salons sprouting up all over the city. Men come to have their hair done in the latest style, taking their inspiration from Korean pop stars and footballer David Beckham. Hairdresser Mustafa Nikba was among the millions who fled the country to become a refugee in neighboring Iran. Now he's returned to share his passion for fashion. If I don't look stylish and cool, my customers will say, he's not with it, he doesn't know anything, why should I let him style my hair? Some religious leaders believe that these trendsetters are not only wasting their time trying to be stylish, but going against the traditions of Islam. These people are wearing clothing that's not appropriate to the character or national identity of Islam. These miserable people don't know anything about their religion, their nation or their identity. Almost half the Afghan population is under 15 years of age. And while people like Mustafa and Zazai are determined to lead the way for budding fashionistas, it's very uncertain whether the younger generation will be able to follow them.